morning, Edward. Good morning, Edward. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, Edward. Good morning. How are you? All right, links are posted. Steve, you're set to begin at nine. Thank you. Good morning to all the commissioners and good morning to anyone out in the ether who happens to be watching this morning. We welcome you to this uh, full commission meeting on February 4, 2021. Uh, the first thing we will do this morning is call the roll to make sure that we have a quorum present in order to be able to conduct business. Sally, would you call the roll for us? Good morning, commissioners. Uh, if you could please unmute um, yourself and say present and the uh, city or county that you are attending remotely from when I call your name, that would be great. Uh, Douglas Clark is not here. Juanita Curry. Present. Uh, um, I'm remotely from Detroit, Michigan. Anthony Ede. Brittany Kellum, Rhonda Lang. Present, attending remotely from Reed City. Steve Lett. Uh, present, and I'm attending from Lee County, Florida. Cynthia Orton. Present, attending from Battle Creek, Michigan, remotely. MC Rothhorn. Present, attending from Lansing, Michigan. Rebecca Zatella. Present, attending remotely from Canton, Michigan. Janice Vallette. Present, attending from Highland, Michigan. Erin Wagner. 
Present, attending remotely from Charlotte, Michigan. Richard Weiss. Present and attending from Saginaw, Michigan. And Dustin Witches. Present and attending from Ann Arbor, Michigan. 10 commissioners are present. Uh, there is a quorum. Thank you. And we're missing uh, Doug and Anthony, correct? And Brittany. Correct. And Brittany will be here shortly. She's running okay. a few minutes late. All right. Uh, next on the agenda is the agenda. Everybody has had an opportunity to look at that uh, prior to this morning. Are there any uh, additions anyone would like to make? Any corrections or deletions anyone would like to make? All right. Uh, if you would approve the uh, agenda as presented, raise your hand. Okay, that passes. Next is the uh, review and approval of the minutes from January, or yes, from January 30, 2021. Uh, are there any corrections, additions, or deletions on that? No, all right. I would entertain a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Uh, Aaron uh, moved and Juanita seconded. Uh, all in favor, uh, raise your hand. The uh, minutes are approved. Uh, next, uh, public comment, and I do understand that we do have public comment this morning. Is that correct, Sally? Correct. All right. Okay. Um, the Zoom meeting is being uh, live streamed to YouTube. Uh, for anyone in the public watching who would prefer to watch via a different platform than they are using, please visit our social media at redistricting mish, M-I, to find the link for viewing on other platforms. Our live stream today includes closed captioning. We have ASL interpretation available for this meeting. If you would like easier viewing options for ASL interpreter on your screen, please email us at redistricting at michigan.gov and we will provide you with additional viewing options. Similarly, if you would like to access translation services during the meeting, please email us at redistricting at michigan.gov for details on how to access language translation services available for this meeting. Translation services are available for both Spanish and Arabic. Please email us and we will provide you with a unique link and call in information. This meeting is being recorded and will be available at redistrictingmichigan.org for viewing at a later date. The meeting is also being transcribed and those transcriptions will be made available and posted on redistrictingmichigan.org along with written public comment submissions. Members of the media who may have questions uh, before, during, or after the meeting should direct those questions to the Communications and Outreach Director, Edward Woods III at Woods, E is in Edward III at Michigan.gov. For purposes of the public record and for members of the public watching, oh, we already did that. Public comment, for those of you who have uh, not joined us previously, I have a few comments on how we conduct our public comment portion of these virtual meetings. Because this is a virtual uh, meeting, members of the public have to sign up in advance in order to address the commission. If you have signed up, you will have two minutes to speak to us. For each member of the public who will be addressing the commission, the Department of State staff will unmute the person who will be speaking for a period not to exceed two minutes. Members of the public who have signed up to speak will be called on in the order in which they signed up. Please remember that once you, have <clears throat> once you are called on to speak, you will have no more than two minutes to complete your remarks. 
public comment sign-up links are posted on Redistricting Michigan social media pages on Facebook and Twitter at Redistricting MI. And if you uh, and you can email your our office at redistricting at michigan.gov. If you would like to submit your thoughts or comments to the commission, you may do that by email to redistricting at michigan.gov and they will be provided to the commission and archived. Uh, Sally Marsh, Director of Special Projects for the Michigan Department of State, will assist us with a public comment procedure. Sally, please. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so individuals who have signed up and indicated that they would like to provide live public comment will now be allowed to do so. Uh, for those individuals participating, just note that after I call your name, your screen will change and you will rejoin the meeting as a presenter. Uh, then you'll need to make sure your video and your sound are turned on before you make live public comments. Um, and if you have any technical difficulties, we'll move on to the next person and then come back to you. Um, and I will let you know when your time has expired, if you aren't done speaking before that two minute mark. So first in line to provide public comment is Alexander DeWitt. Please allow a moment for our staff to unmute you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex DeWitt of Bay City, and I run the largest non-party political page in Bay County, Get Accountable Bay City. Happy to get the opportunity to be the speaker uh, in front of this great example of political transparency and accountability for the citizens of Michigan. Uh, as a reminder, Proposal 2 tw in 2018 was passed with 61.3% of the vote in 2018, and all but 17 counties approved the measure in majority. This group has a mighty responsibility to improve the districting results for Michigan. The current set of congressional district boundaries has led to blatant inequalities favoring one party in representation. Following the list of uh, results of statewide presidential or Senate elections since 2012 to compare them to the representation in Lansing and Washington, 2020 statewide lean, uh, Democratic plus three, 2020 representation in the US House was even, Michigan House Republican plus three, 2018 statewide lean, Democrat plus seven, 2018 representation US House even, Michigan House Republican plus seven, Michigan Senate Republican plus 21. 2016 statewide lean Republican plus 0 0.2, 2016 representation U.S. House Republican plus 14, Michigan House Republican plus 7, 2014 statewide lean Democratic 13, 2014 representation U.S. House Republican plus 14, Republic, or Michigan House R plus 7, and Michigan Senate Republican plus 8. And in 2012, the statewide lean was Democratic plus 9, 2012 representation U.S. House Republican plus 14, and Michigan House Republican plus 4. This clearly shows why this commission is necessary and why your job is important to rid our party of um, our state of the party gerrymanders that have led to this inequity. It will be difficult and almost impossible to solve every issue, but getting as close as it will assist their great state in improving democracy for all residents, stretching from Monroe to Ontonagon and in size from Point of Bark to Detroit. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. DeWitt. Sally, next person, please. Next in line is Susan Smith. Please provide a moment for our staff to unmute you, promote you. Welcome, you have two minutes. Thank you and good morning, commissioners. I'm Susan Smith, Vice President for Advocacy for the League of Women Voters of Michigan. When I spoke to you last December, I mentioned the League's support for redistricting reform in Michigan, and especially Proposal 2, which created the Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission. From watching your meetings, I know that the Commission has a keen interest in communities of interest and how to encourage them to speak at the public hearings you will be conducting in May and June. As you know, respecting communities of interest is third in the prioritized list of criteria. <clears throat> Pardon me, the commission is required to follow when drawing the maps. 
Given that, the League of Women Voters is working with its 27 local leagues to identify and support communities of interest. To date, we have recruited over 75 league members whom we will be training this month. They will identify and educate communities of interest in over 40 counties across the state. They will help people to draw maps of their communities using a mapping software tool called Representable, which I understand will be compatible with the mapping software purchased by the commission. Last week, we had the opportunity to meet with your executive director, Sue Hammersmith, and your communications and outreach director, Edward Woods. We look forward to working with Mr. Woods as he develops plans for the commission's outreach and public hearings in the coming months. Thank you for this opportunity to address you. I would be happy to try and answer any questions you might have. Uh, thank you, Ms. Smith, for your comments. Uh, glad to have you present again, and uh, we won't have any questions at this time. Thank you. Okay. That concludes, uh, that concludes public comment. Sorry, Mr. Chair. That's okay. Uh, MC, I wasn't ignoring you. Uh, I, I'm assuming you had some type of question, but uh, I don't see this as a question answer period in two minutes. So um, we'll have ample opportunity in the next 10 meetings that are out in the public, at least for all of that. Um, Correspondent Sue, do we have any correspondence to deal with today? Uh, we do not have any correspondence at this time. I would note that there were three uh, emails sent to the commission that were provided to us that uh, the commissioners reviewed. Uh, thank you to whoever sent those in. Uh, for those and rest assured to the people out in the public, we do review and look at uh, those public uh, comments that are submitted. Executive Director Report, Sue. Um, good morning, everybody. It's great to see um, everyone here today. I wanna thank the commissioners for their continuing work and their commitment to creating fair nonpartisan redistricting. Provided for your discussion today are tentative timelines for the selections process for consultants, as well as draft resolution 2021-0201 to provide a framework for approving the rules of procedure if you confirm that General Counsel Pestula's third draft is ready for your approval after continued review today. You've also received for your review a draft Oh, no, you've not received a draft of vendor questions because we did not receive any for the Voting Rights Legal Act Council RFP um, under, the man under the mandated timelines for submitting those questions. Um, also today as secretary to the, to the commission and in their role to keep the public record and furnish technical services, Michigan Department of State has provided a memo describing a solution for facilitating public comment and map submissions from the public for which they will cover the cost. I'm excited about this very generous proposition and look forward to your feedback. Um, and that's really my official report for this morning. Um, as our icebreaker, I would like to ask what has been your most interesting aspect of working with the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission. And do I have a volunteer to start or should I just call on people? Call away. Yeah. MC, I saw your hand. I saw Aaron's hand too. I'm um, getting her next. Okay. I'll, um, I think the, the most um, interesting has been the response that um, I think we have had with the number of people who have said, I've watched all your meetings. That has, yeah. Been, been super interesting, but it also, yeah, I, I did get a, a big response when people actually heard my name and said, oh my gosh, like you're going to be on the commission. So I'm, I'm not surprised and pleased, but it's, it's very interesting to me. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Erin. You can be next. I was just going to say I found the entire thing interesting so far, and I have to agree with MC. I think it's fascinating to see the amount of public support we have for this. Thank you. Thank you. Cynthia? Well, I think just uh, watching the process of 13 random individuals coming together, and I think we work really well together and we've made a lot of progress, I think, towards our goal. That's just been pleasantly surprising to me. Thank you. Uh, Winita, what do you have to offer here? What's your most interesting part? Well, my most interesting part is getting to know each and every one of the commissioners. Um, they're all so gracious and so kind, everybody, as Cynthia just said, everybody seems to work together so well. And uh, it's like we, we're put together and we're made up of all these different, uh, whatever we have in us and we're coming together really well. And I'm enjoying knowing and getting to know the, the whole conquest of the redistricting uh, idea and getting to know everybody else. And so it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Anita. How about you, Janice? Well, I too have found it very interesting to meet all the diverse people. I'm actually was surprised that a random drawing could get people so diverse. So it's been really interesting meeting everyone. Thank you, Janice. Steve? Well, uh, likewise, it's, it's been interesting uh, watching the group uh, I'll say coalesce and grow together. Um, it's also interesting to me um, because of my attorney background, uh, working with Julianne as she expands a simple project into a 50 page document. So <laughs> no offense, just... no offense, Julianne. <laughs> She's taking care of us, Steve, right? <laughs> She's taking care of and doing a very good job too. Very and good. she is, yes. I concur with that wholeheartedly. Richard. I guess what I find the most interesting is I thought it would be fairly simple to draw the lines, but after reading all the rules and court opinions, uh, it's not gonna be that easy. So uh, I think that's the most interesting to me. How about you, Rhonda? I think my most interesting has been doing um, research um, as far as people who have heard about the commission and people who haven't communities of interest and just looking at it as a whole, not only in the state, but in the rural area for me, has been really interesting. Okay, thank you for adding that. Um, Rebecca, how about you? Sorry, I'm unmuting here. Um, I would echo what everybody else said. One, I'm surprised with what a diverse group we have with so many interesting backgrounds and um, that's been really delightful to see. And then also just how complex and complicated our task is. It, it sounds simple on paper, but once you start looking at all the requirements, it's, it's gonna be quite a challenge. Dustin, what has been your most interesting aspect? Seeing how everyone is working working together with us, um, and uh, and just the interest of how many people wanted to to be a part of this, uh, and all the people that submitted resumes for all the positions that we hired for. I mean, it's just mind boggling mind boggling to me. But it uh, it's actually really cool to see that everyone has an interest. Thanks, Dustin. How about you, Anthony? For me, um, I think the most interesting thing is the amount of uh, positivity that we've generated so far. Coming into this, I thought that we get a lot of negative backlash, but you know, so far, the vast majority of comments I've received from the community have been comments of hope and of kindness, and I hope we can keep that up. I hope so too. <laughs> um, I think I've gotten all the commissioners. Did I miss anybody? And then I'll go to Julianne. 
Good morning to everyone. I think my most interesting is, is watching the process unfold even before I was hired and tracking it and seeing how, how the group is coming together and collaborating as a team. I'm thankful to be a part of it and I'm very excited uh, for the next period of time. And, and just know if I give you a 50 page document, it was a hundred pages in my mind. So I've actually cut it down for you. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Edward, here you go on the spot, your very first meeting, fourth day on the job. <laughs> what has been your most interesting aspect, even though I know you've been watching for a long time and thinking and, and working toward this day? I'm the camaraderie, you know, the camaraderie, the professionalism, the interaction, the desire to do good work. I mean, who could not be excited to do redistricting? It's open, it's transparent, it's what civics is supposed to be. And that's what all we're charged to do. So this is just a wonderful opportunity to actually do the right thing. Thank you, Edward. And I have to follow the communications person <laughs> who has the speech all prepared, right? <laughs> what, what I enjoy is, is meeting the people involved in the process. And I am so impressed with the way people are respectful in our meetings and the camaraderie that's developing and the commitment especially toward the end product. So I, I thank you and I'm, I'm so impressed that 13 random people um, could come as far as you've come and I, and I know that you're working very hard to do the right thing and all committed to creating fair redistricting. So um, it, it's just heartwarming and I too am very excited to be a part of this as a staff member, so, so thank you. Back to you, Steve. Uh, thank you, Sue. Uh, Richard, uh, drawing the lines will be easy. Getting them to be acceptable is going to be hard. <laughs> okay, uh, legal counsel report. And I'll, I'll take your comment that you started out at 100 pages and went to, went to 50. The, the good news is I'm not billing you by the hour. Uh, so for, the, for the page. <laughs> for, for my um, general counsel report today, I would like to share uh, that you will notice the equipment policy I did not draft. There was a miscommunication and it is uh, not necessary. So that will not be moving forward at this point. If it's something in the future the commission decides as a body is important to you, then I would be more than happy uh, to respond to that need. What I am excited to move forward with today is the discussion of draft three of the rules of procedure. For next week, uh, please expect a memo on the Open Meetings Act relative to conferences and seminars. That was a request that the commission made. I also anticipate having your FOIA policy before you next week. And on the horizon, uh, I've identified the conflicts of interest policy as well as um, a procurement evaluation proposal and working with Edwards on the communications plan, which uh, policy for your review and approval, which is also critical. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Julianne. All right, uh, Edward, welcome. Glad to have you on board. Your uh, smiley face in front of, uh, I don't know what, Pacific, Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico, How's Lake Michigan? Lake Michigan, okay. They're taken Thank out in front, of, front of your cottage, right? There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we're glad to have you here and uh, your turn, go right ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wanna thank the entire commission um, for the selection and the opportunity to be your communications and outreach director for this very important work. This is just a great opportunity that you afforded me. I really wanna thank my teammates, um, Sue Hammersmith. Um, she can throw down the hammer at any time. So I know we're gonna be great in terms of getting things accomplished in decency and order and just enjoy working with Sue, such a delightful person. And, you know, I love Julianne, whether it's 100 pages, 50 pages, or one page. Julianne is my girl, and we're going to be doing great work together to make sure we stay compliant with the Constitution and with your code of conduct. Um, really want to thank the Michigan Department of State staff um, doing the transition and working before. They have been fantastic 
um, led by Sally Marsh, just a wonderful team and their desire to see us succeed, to see every function to succeed and be a part of the process is just phenomenal. Um, I don't know if we know all the work that goes in behind the scenes, but just even putting this meeting together and the coordination um, so it runs so flawlessly, they ought to be commended every single time because this is work. And when it doesn't go right, everyone knows. But when it does go right, it's expected. So I just want to say thanks to each and every one of them who are on the line, those who have met and those who I haven't met to ensure inclusion as it relates to this meeting. So everyone knows that they can offer input, um, be participating in the process. There's no language barrier. Um, there's no um, physical barrier in terms of disability. Everyone can participate. And I really wanna thank Sally, as well as her colleague, Sarah, for just a tremendous job and how everything has worked. I've also had the privilege of working with Jake, who's the communications person for the um, Department of State. It's just delightful and the resources that we'll be able to use and um, understand how things work behind the scenes, which will be very invaluable to our work. I wanna thank Zaneeb as well with regards to public engagement. Those are the two principles that will be helping with communications and outreach with regards to the resources and they've opened things up quite well. Also like to thank Ken and Chad for the procurement as it relates to my phone as well as the computer that is forthcoming. All those things are really necessary in order to do the job and they've just been moving very rapidly to ensuring that we're following the appropriate protocols and the security so that we can have um, things running smoothly in order. As many of you know, I met individually with each of you just to kind of understand what you're looking for as a foundation for the communications and outreach. The reason behind that was I want the commission to own this communication and outreach plan. This is not Edward's plan or Sue's plan or Julianne's plan. This is your plan. And I wanna make sure the things that we're doing is representative of the commission. And I want to know I heard you very clearly about the public hearings and getting out there. And um, we have a process that we're working on to do that. I'll share more about that next week, but we have a process that will build up, that will build up to the um, public hearings that will take place in May and June in terms of what we'll do in March, what we'll be doing in April, and then how we're gonna be functioning with regards to the public hearings in May and June. We will have a backup plan whether we do things in person or we do things virtually, we will have a plan in place. And a thing I really want to stress, and as we talked in our meetings, the importance of human connection, the importance of human connection and people being able to connect with you as an individual who's passionate about the work and making sure that we have fair lines here in Michigan. So I wanna thank you for carving time out of your schedule to share your input to provide me with a foundation, not just for our communication policy, but our plan and what needs to take place in the few months and the times ahead, short-term and long-term as it relates to communications and outreach. Very happy to report that in March, we're gonna be working with the Michigan Association of Counties, the Michigan Township Association and the Michigan Municipal League by um, getting each and every one of you who are willing to provide comments remotely, virtually, during their public hearings to get the word out to the public about our work. So it's just happy to get that um, lined up and get the things in place. And I'll be sharing more information as, it, as we go along. But this will be our first opportunity to go out, show our faces, do a two to three minute spill, build some confidence and let people know that the Michigan, the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission is alive and well and wants to hear from each and every one, if not all 10 million people, as many that want to participate as possible because you have a right to participate in this process because this is what the state voted for. So grateful for those opportunities. We wanna thank those in California, Colorado, and Arizona. We're trying to form relationships with them and glean from best practices, as well as Tom Ivaco, as well as reaching out to voters, not politicians and others, to ensure that we have a robust and best practices plan that will be not only the envy of the, um, the nation, but the envy of the world under your leadership as a commission. 
Thank you so much for this opportunity to present. And if there's any questions, I can take them at this time. Okay, anybody have any questions for uh, Edward? Juanita. I think one of my questions would be, um, do Mr. Edward uh, Woods know exactly, or not exactly, but around what time we'll probably be hitting the uh, town halls? What month? We're looking at mid-May and finishing off in June is our, our tentative timeline at right now. Okay. Um, once again, that will also deal with the pandemic, whether we're in person or virtual, but we'll have a okay. plan for both, both ways. But mm -hmm. um, that is the timeline that we're trying to meet right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Others, any other questions? Uh, Dustin? Welcome to the team, and I look forward to uh, working with you. And it was nice talking to you yesterday and uh, hearing what you had to say this morning. So thank you very much. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Edward. I appreciate your uh, update and look forward to working with you and uh, for your future updates. Uh, Glad to see we're looking at getting out to these other uh, governmental units. There's a lot of them out there. And they're all meeting virtually for all intents and purposes. So uh, Michigan Department of State, Sally, do you have an update for us? I bet we're going Hello, to talk at least a little bit about computers, right? <laughs> well, uh, as always, if you have any issues with your um, with your computer or getting your computer, if you get an email that doesn't make sense to you or a phone call that doesn't make sense to you, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to me or of course to Sue. We'll help uh, troubleshoot behind the scenes. They should be uh, kind of on their way and, and getting delivered to all of you in phases at this point um, based, on, uh, based on Sue's direction and, and the direction that you all provided to her. So uh, if there are any issues, you know, don't hesitate to let us know. Um, I wanted to provide a bit of an update today and circulated a memo to this uh, on this topic as well to all of you about um, public comment and collecting public comment and really what that is going to look like um, once you really start, you know, encouraging the public to submit their feedback uh, to you even more than you already are today. Uh, we've listened to your questions and concerns about how that's going to work how it's going to work with map submissions, with written comment, and how you're going to catalog it, how you're going to organize it. I think Doug has raised great points about this. Many of you have kind of raised great questions and concerns along these lines, you know, learning from the best practices or sort of the areas of improvement of, of California and other commissions in the past. So we've been thinking about solutions, uh, you know, both in response to your questions and concerns, and also just anticipating how the current email system uh, will become difficult to manage uh, once you really start receiving uh, what I hope and what I know all of you hope is, is just a, a real incredible volume of input from the public. Uh, and so as secretary without a vote of the commission, uh, which as Sue mentioned earlier, is responsible for keeping the public record in the constitution, um, we, we, you know, are seeking to procure a tool that, um, that would allow for this to happen and would really facilitate transparency. Um, and so, you know, transparency and organization, both for, for all of you and for the public. Uh, so I wanted to highlight a couple of points and then I really welcome your feedback, your questions, wanted to make sure we really spent time talking about this. Um, so in terms of facilitation, uh, just a couple of key points. One is that this is all about facilitating the public comment between the public and all of you, right? And facilitating that in a, in a transparent and organized way. Uh, and it's, it's about meeting your needs and making sure that the public can either in written or in map form provide their feedback to all of you. Uh, it envisioned, I think the vision of a, of a tool like this would really be focused on transparency 
right? Um, it would facilitate the public submitting a partial or complete map to you and allow the public to see that um, in concert with all of the other public submissions. Um, and I think it's important to just underscore that that can boost the confidence in the process overall for the members of the public, right? Instead of sending an email and being unsure how you're gonna see that data file or unsure what you're going to do with that map drawing, they can see that translated. Um, you know, this tool envisions that it would be kind of immediately. Uh, and then, you know, a, an added benefit of that, of course, is accessibility, right? Making this real and accessible to the public, which I know many of you have talked about before. Um, and I think it also can assure all of you that the Department of State is playing that facilitator role, right? That you're seeing all of the public comment and that you're able to, to really have confidence that the secretary of the commission is playing that very secretarial, very sort of facilitating role um, and not, you know, providing comment in a way that is, that is difficult for you to, to look at or to kind of manage. And organization, I think, is the other kind of really key point to highlight here. Uh, this sort of vision uh, envisions that you'd be able to catalog uh, and we'd be able to catalog comment for you so you can search. So you can look at things geographically or thematically and you can interact with the, um, with the, with the data and with the submissions without hours and hours of staff time doing that cataloging work, right? It would allow that on the front end so that you don't have a volume trying to sort through. Um, and then of course the data piece, I think this is, is really um, essential. And I think it's something that all of you really talked about when you talked about the map line drawing RFP that you're all putting out is right. Like how can this person, how can this vendor take input and, and put it into our maps at our direction. And so uh, by facilitating this sort of public comment tool, it would allow for, for that, um, that really easy transfer of data and export of data. Um, so those are some of the key points I wanted to mention. Like I said, I, I really welcome your feedback and any questions you might have and wanna make sure that the functionality that I just talked about um, or any that you come up with down, down the line can be you know, added to or integrated into as much as possible um, you know, a tool like this. So with that, I, I'm opening up to questions. Um, but really um, excited about the the prospect of this. This was uh, this was a subject of the memorandum we received. Yes. Okay. Setting forth uh, now, I assume that uh, whoever we uh, eventually hire for the map drawing uh, is going to want a little input on this. Yes. Well, and I would add that the RFP that you all put out for map drawing explicitly requires that uh, the expert who you hire is able to integrate different data files into the maps that you all are, are drawing. So I think, of course, they would be able to have input, but I wouldn't envision that being an issue based on the RFP you all, you all put out. Assuming that the various... Um programs can talk to each other, that would be true. Yes, yeah. And my, my technical expertise is limited, but my understanding is that for geographical type files that, that we were talking about um, a couple of weeks ago, I think, GIS files, there's some standard formats that, that are able to be integrated across, across forms. Good. That's correct. Thank you, Mike. Anthony. So I think, you know, everything you just said is exactly what we need. Uh, my question is, do we know if any tools like that currently exist? Yes, I, I believe that the functionality just that I just described, it does exist. Um, and that, you know, the Department of State has the funding, you know, not just the ability as secretary to the commission to, um, to procure this tool, but also that we, ha we have the funding to be able to support that um, so that your budget, uh, you can focus on those, the, the things that you really already have outlined that you really need to spend your funding on. Anybody, any other questions on this? 
this certainly will be interesting. It gets up and running and we start seeing people uh, sending us maps. I can imagine we're going to have some interesting maps that we get. And one thing to add, um, you know, Anthony, just thinking a little bit more about your question as well, is that there are, you know, as you all know, because they were linked in your um, in your introductory materials, there are already in existence, right, publicly facing map uh, map tools, right? You can go on right now. A member of the public could go right now and go to a tool like Representable that Sue Smith just mentioned in her public comment, right? Like um, Districter, I believe, is one of them uh, that's publicly available. And so part of what this tool envisions as well is that it would be able to catalog and take any a map that someone drew on any of those different platforms and be able to be provided to all of you in a way that is integrated or sort of in concert with one another. Uh, so you're not receiving a bunch of different file types or a bunch of different links, if that is helpful, Anthony. I just wanted to add that. I think what what I was seeing is that we would be able, if it works right, be able to overlay a map on, if we have a map that we're looking at, they could overlay that on, on our map or our map on their map. So as long as we don't have 10 overlays that you can't make any sense out of, we'd probably be okay. Aaron. Sally, I may have missed it, but was, was there a timeline when MDOS would be implementing this? As soon as possible. <laughs> um, I think as you all now are well aware, within state government, it takes a long time sometimes uh, to get from point A to point B uh, in, in the sort of appropriate manner following the proper protocols. So uh, we'll be uh, really focused on getting this up and running in time for you all to uh, be doing public hearings and doing kind of the really robust outreach that Edward was talking about. So I'd say more to come on the timeline, but um, time is of the essence, as all of you know. Okay. MC. Yeah, I just I just wanted to acknowledge. I, I felt very heard. I feel like the, the the three pages of the memorandum just reflects a lot of our discussion. It feels comprehensive, thorough. Just really appreciate it. And yeah, Aaron asked the question. I just wanted to make sure we got it. If, if this is the right time to talk about it and sort of approve it officially, if that's the right time, I also want to move. To that direct in that direction, if it's appropriate for the chair, or if it's appropriate now, but I just yeah, timing feels important. Well, the I, I mean we can do that, but the Secretary of State, this is their program and and their money, so I guess they're going to do it regardless of what we say. Okay. But, I mean I'd be happy to make a motion that that's the way we want to go. Mister, Mister Chair. Yes. I apologize that the. the if, if the commission is going to make a motion, um, but but again, just to highlight that this would be all facilitated through MDOS, uh, not through not through the, the commission. I understand that. And this is kind of an approval of their proposal that that we are on board with their proposal. Excellent. All right. Cryptic resolution of support. Yeah. Uh, OK, who's who supported? Aaron. All right. All in favor of uh, supporting uh, Secretary of State in this effort, raise your hand. Any opposed, same sign. Okay, a unanimous support for the Secretary of State. Thank you, commissioners, that's all I've got. All right, thank you, Sally. We always appreciate your enlightening us on uh, the various technicalities and uh, of the uh, state of Michigan government. Unfinished business, rules of procedure, 33rd draft. Oh, excuse me, that's a typo, third draft. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let me share my screen here. Before, you may say this, but before you get started, the red lines that we're seeing are the, the new changes and the other changes that we have talked and approved previously are uh, not highlighted. That, that's correct, Mr. Chair. They've already been incorporated um, per our last discussion. So these would, be, mm -hmm, these would be the new, the new changes. So 
Before us today, we have draft three of the rules. The goals remain the same. We'll have a facilitated discussion of the updated draft to make sure that do the changes reflect uh, the body's previous discussions. And we'll continue this cycle on, until uh, the rules are finalized. This, there are five um, amendments in draft three uh, that we'll be working through. So again, a much shorter slide deck than our, our initial slide deck that we covered in draft one. The first modification is the addition of the definition for redistricting matter, which is found on page one. Now, while redistricting matter is only used once in the rules, I thought the, the best placement of it was to in the definition section. So this is the proposed language before you. Any matter on the subject, subject of determining or revising state legislative and US congressional district boundaries and redistricting related activities of the commission. And then also it touches on what that excludes, which would be organizational administrative or operational work of the commission that is not directly associated to the core activity of redistricting. Were there any comments on this language? Any questions on the language? Mm -hmm. Okay. The first in kernel cross reference on page three directs, it references, it references in section 2.4 adoption of the rules and how they can be amended in the future. So the cross reference to section 14.0 is in fact the process by which the rules would be amended. And that's again found on page three. Are there any comments or questions on this language or proposed change? You're referring to section 14 of the amendment, correct? That's correct, of the of the bylaws, of, excuse me, of the rules, excuse me. Just so I'm clear, when you say rules, you're referring to the amendment, the constitutional amendment? No, the rules, the, our, you, the commission's rules of procedure, section 14.0 of these rules. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Our second internal cross-reference is also found on page three. It's found in the eligibility criteria section and it adds subpart E to reflect uh, disqualifications as set forth in section 3.4 of these rules. And I would note that as set forth is duplicated in the text of the document, the slide is correct. So I will be making that. I just wanted to note that that correction will be made um, if the, the revision is acceptable to the body. But what this does is it distinguishes between, between disqualified for appointment or uh, elected office by the Michigan constitution, which would include uh, article four, section three and the eligibility criteria set forth in the constitution. And it would also acknowledge in subpart E that we've the commission has taken the vacancy portion of that language and inserted it in section 3.4 of the rules of procedure of the commission. So again, it's just that internal cross reference to take the reader to the appropriate section internal to the document, um, as well as, as referencing and highlighting uh, the foundational authority of the constitution. Are there any comments or questions on this proposed language? I'll move forward. Uh, on page seven, there is an addition, um, a clarification of the types of districts. It is a definition in the beginning, but there, uh, I heard the concern that it was um, six pages removed from those definitions. So the, for ease of reference and convenience of the reader, uh, the language was uh, replicated here. In manner of voting on page 12, the addition of unanimous consent, which captures uh, current practice of the commission that's used particularly for approving the agenda and, and those types of, of business. So I wanted to make sure that the rules reflected that as far as the permissible manner of voting. And the final change is found on page 15. And this captures the ability of any member of the commission 
to raise an objection and that the chairperson independently or at the request of a member may take action to address such remarks. And this is getting towards the, uh, we had a robust discussion last meeting on this topic and this is the language that is presented for your consideration. Any questions on that? That drew a lot of comments the last time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Julianne and I had an opportunity to speak with this uh, this week. <clears throat> and uh, you can rest assured that if someone brings, one of the commissioners, one of you, uh, raise an objection or a point of order or whatever regarding uh, any type of uh, activity at a, at a public meeting, that I will do something. I don't know exactly what that may be. Uh, and, and sometimes doing nothing is doing something, but I will do something. I will not ignore you. And if you feel I am, then raise an objection that I'm not doing anything. And uh, we'll go from there. But I, I want to let you guys to uh, know that I'm going to try to keep things moving along in a civil manner when we get to uh, public uh, meetings. Thank you. And Steve, I also, I, I thank you. I also wanted to highlight for this language in particular. Um, so the Open Meeting Act grants the public the ability to participate, to view uh, and, and to participate in such meetings subject to reasonable restrictions by the public body. So the First Amendment, then we overlay the First Amendment onto it with free speech and, and being able to see things. So I really wanted to highlight for the commission that the rules on the time limit, uh, the rules on adhering to a topic germane to the discussion, Again, if a speaker is, is discussing water rates in their community, that, that is not something that would be germane to the commission's business of redistricting um, the lines. So those types of issues. But I, I did wanna highlight that, that the, the level of objectionable behavior and where it rises um, to intervention, it is, the bar is extremely high. Uh, because of the constitutional protections on free speech and in the context of a, of a limited public forum. So I just wanted to, to highlight that for the, for the commission that oftentimes um, certain members of the public may not be pleased uh, and we'll let you know that. And uh, their, their comments um, may, may not be something that's appreciated, but uh, in most cases they do have the right to make that but we'll, we'll walk through that together as it arises in the future. I just wanted to highlight that uh, as we talk about this language, that that's a concern that, that we uh, will all have in, in our minds as it occurs. Thank you. Okay, any uh, questions, comments? Not seeing any, then I would entertain a motion to adopt these rules. Aaron. You're making that motion. Second, please. Yes. Uh, MC is seconded. Uh, all in favor of the adoption of the rules presently before us as uh, have been amended, raise your hand. Thank you. Uh, opposed, the same sign. They are adopted unanimously. Uh, Julianne, thank you for all of your uh, work on this and uh, for my teasing you on the uh, length of the document. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as a, I guess a question, this is a draft, but uh, are there gonna be any editorial changes that you might be making? The only uh, change that I would be doing is removing draft three, moving today's date, February 4th, to adopt it and effective, and then removing the watermark. Those would be the changes that I would be making. And as okay. I indicated, there is a duplicate, the, the, scriv the only Scrivener error that I'm aware of, and I will read through the whole document completely, uh, would be that repetitive clause of as set forth. So we're... Uh we can expect a clean copy at some point in the future. 
I will get this, uh, the document reread uh, and cleaned up today and forwarded to MDOS for posting on, on your website as soon as possible. By the end, you know, I should have it to the, to the appropriate people by the end of today. In the meantime, commissioners, if you have any questions uh, about the rules, you've got a copy now that uh, for all intents and purposes uh, is the final draft. Okay, um, timelines for consultant selection process. Who's doing that? Sue. Um, good morning again. We started talking about this last time and I said, let me just bring you a calendar. So um, I did provide for you a calendar. As you can see, there's many, many moving parts to this process. But um, upcoming next, um, the mapping proposals are due by February 10th. So it will take about a week for the internal review that um, the Michigan Department of State and your ICRC staff will work on. And then we will get these proposals to the subcommittee to review on their own time. And, and we will have a meeting scheduled. My plan would be to reach out to these subcommittees uh, within the next day and find your time avail availability for your subcommittee. So those of you who are on subcommittees, I will be reaching out to you to find out your specific time of availability on those two days that are selected there to make the process move forward as quickly as possible. Um, this is a draft schedule subject to change. I mean, if we get 20 mapping proposals, it's gonna take longer possibly for internal review. So um, we're gonna target for these dates, um, try to get those subcommittee meetings set um, within the next couple business days here, and then uh, we'll move forward accordingly. Questions? Okay. Uh, you, did you pop this timeline that you're referencing, you published that? Um, I believe that MDOS staff would put that on the website because it's one of our meeting materials. I haven't looked on the website this morning to see that it's there. Maybe Sarah or okay. Sally could confirm I, I guess my question was, did, was it in this packet for this meeting today? Yes, as an attachment that I sent out. Okay, then I missed it. So if you could send that to me. Happy I, to. I was having some technical difficulties uh, getting things to print yesterday. So I thought I had everything. Okay. It's in the chat, Steve, if that helps. Okay. Sarah thank you. That. And hi, Brittany. <laughs> ah, Brittany's here. Hi, Brittany. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Uh, anything else uh, on that, Sue? Uh, yes, I do have one other thing. The Michigan Department of State has a specific code of conduct for the reviewing process in regards to confidentiality and those kinds of issues. And I think we will be bringing a policy back next week and just a, next week, probably a very brief policy, but um, Julianne will work on, on this to make sure that everything that we do um, for the generous offer of the Michigan Department of State, for example, to post this and reach out to vendors that we um, agree to follow their general guidelines in the review process. Okay, thank you for that. Um, What's everybody feeling? We got a break scheduled here and we're going into a long uh, session. Uh, let's take 10 minutes. Be back at 10.10. Uh,
It's like we're waiting on Dustin unless he's got his video turned off. And uh, Sarah sent the uh, document on proposed timelines. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate it. Dustin is back. So we're up to answer to bitter, quest bitter questions for the uh, Voting Rights Act Legal Council RFP. Sue, uh, you're going to help us with that? Um, I would be very happy to help you if we had received any questions by the deadline, but as of three o'clock tomorrow, yesterday afternoon, which was the deadline for proposal questions, um, we had not received any. Um, I was surprised. Um, uh, Chad reached out to me and he said, generally, this points to a clear, well-written RFP. If they don't have questions, and he also said sometimes bidders don't want to tip their hands so they won't ask something that they want another bidder to know. So um, this is where we are at this point. Um, so we, we do not have to do that process. And I'm sure Chad will um, either not, I don't, know the, I don't know their process, whether he simply doesn't post anything because there are no answers or he's, he does post something that states there were no questions and, and thus there, were no, there are no answers to report. Um, Julianne will be our primary staff on the VRA proposal review, and I will take the mapping. And of course, we always work together, but we're going to try to divide and conquer a little bit on this and keep each other informed so uh, we can move on with other important work of the commission. So, All right. And the... Uh, the RFP uh, redistricting committee is myself and who else? Uh, Aaron and Dustin. And the other committee the uh, Voting Rights Act is Doug, Anthony, Brittany, and Rebecca. Okay. So we have 45 minutes set aside, nothing to do. <laughs> that's, that's uh, you may gain a little bit of time today. Um, and maybe people would appreciate the gift of 45 minutes today. Okay. Uh, Anthony we, has a question. Okay. I'll get to you in a second, Anthony. Do we know how many uh, submissions, mm -hmm. how many applications there were? Application deadline has not, we've not reached the deadline yet. So, okay. so we've got a, another week before we get in the mapping and a week after that for the VRA legal counsel. Okay. Anthony. Uh, you just asked the question I was going to ask. So I yield. Sorry. Okay, any other questions? We have 45 minutes. What do you want to do, folks? All right. Upcoming media agenda topics. I think those were on our back of our calendar submitted previously. Um, there are some general ones that we've listed, general topics kind of by month and meeting, but um, as we move along, we certainly have additions. So um, I don't believe we have any unfinished business from this meeting to work on next time, but um, we will have a communications policy that Edward and Julianne are working on to present to the commission. 
we will have some kind of a policy for the RFP reviewers to look at. Um, Julianne mentioned she's going to provide open meeting acts guidance for when we participate in webinars and other types of public meetings. And uh, Edward is moving right along. I know he's only four days in, but I'm sure he'll have some strategies and information to present to you. And we can continue on with some strategic conversations about how we move forward. So I, I think we've got enough to keep us busy for a while. So Edward, you got four days under your belt and you're already behind. Well, um, it beats the alternative. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always said when I was in practice, you know, it's always better to have too much work than not enough. Okay, um, we have announcements. And we have listed a webinar on the next big thing. I, since I didn't put that on, Sue, I assume you put that on. I think MC had asked for this to be added to the agenda. And there's the link there. So people, it's kind of hard to find on the website. So this is the link to find it. Um, so if you'd like to uh, register to be a participant, then they will send you the information so you can um, listen in on this webinar. But this is Tom Abaco, who was presented to the commission in the past, and he, and he will be presenting with his group on communities of interest. And I know MC thought it would be very interesting for the commission and probably a, another opportunity um, for some learning in this area. And Julianne. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, and the link, I did click it. It does take you directly to the informational page. And I wanted to assure the commissioners that the forum for this event is not an interactive event. It's a webinar, a, a stream. So, and you will, you will also have the ability to attend live conferences if they're available in the future and all of that. As, as a body too, uh, and the memo will outline that. But I just wanted to reassure the commission, is particularly for this uh, event, when you register, they just send you a link to watch. So, so there, are no, there are no issues with that. And the topic is directly on point to the work of the commission. Uh, so you should not feel that you're in any way prohibitive or restricted from, from attending or participating. Again, the discussions between the group, the commissioners, uh, whether electronic or verbal, is what can, would control an open meeting at violation. So just merely attending something to gather information would not be prohibitive. And, and I'll lay that all out in the memo that I'll have for you next week. I just, since it's an agenda item and we gained so much time on the agenda, I thought I'd make those brief comments for you. Thank is you. This, is this registration open now? Yes, it is. And, and if you are, the instructions that I received when I when I forwarded my information, the instructions on the website also indicated that they would post the link to watch on their website that day. So you there is not even a need to pre-register, although that may be helpful because it might put you on an informational list that you might receive other information in the future that you would find useful. But you certainly don't for this type of an event. It, it says very clearly on the website, you don't have to pre-register uh, that it will be available that day regardless. Very good. MC. I was just going to acknowledge that if Susan Smith is still watching, that this was the this was going to be my question, whether she was going to attend this, because she had, with the League of Women Voters, they had talked about educating their members and asking for volunteers around communities of interest. And because it's such a high priority for us in terms of the you know, the, the constitutional priorities, and because it seems so, um, I mean, I think it's defined, but I don't think it's set, like the definition of what a community of interest is not set. It feels like it's important because we're the first commission to sort of wrestle with it um, and try to understand it. The more that, yeah, people who are wrestling and the more we can listen in on the conversation and try to develop our own understanding, it feels like, yeah, I just wanted, that's where I was going to ask the League of Women Voters, Susan Smith, as whether she was intending this. So, if you're listening, Susan, that was it. Check. Uh, Juanita. I just, I just want to say that in about 10 minutes, my. Oh, you flipped yourself off, Juanita. Turn yourself back on. Just there you go. To say, 
Okay, in about 10 minutes or less, my computer is going to cut off and restart. So if you don't see me, that's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Edward. Let you guys know. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just want the commissioners to know we'll be reaching out to you with regards to um, professional pictures. So just look out for email from me with regards to that so we can get that scheduled. Mm. They, they don't have to be current, do they? Um, it would be helpful. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going with a younger one. Thank you. Uh, who is Sue? Um, when Julianne suggested adding this section to our agendas, um, she suggested also letting the other commissioners know when we were going to be engaging in outreach. So I just wanted to confirm with and let this commission know that MC and I were invited to attend a Blue Brigade meeting on March 31st, and we will be attending that meeting to provide the information we're allowed to provide um, to that body. And what, also- What kind of meeting, who, to who? It's called the Blue Brigade. Okay. And this will be a Zoom meeting. Um, so, um, and then also on February 17th, Michigan Nonprofit Association, um, which is engaging communities of color in two major cities in communities of interest conversations. And they are holding a press conference that day and they will announce their grant recipients of local nonprofits. And they've asked me to provide three to five minutes of information on the commission. I'm assuming around how people can engage in um, providing public comment to us. So um, I, I will get further information on that next week. And, and that was who again? That's the Michigan Nonprofit Association. Thank you. They did a lot of work with the census and are, are now taking the alliances that they've created and the processes and moving that into how can they further the work of redistricting and engaging communities of interest. And so we, we appreciate them walking alongside us in this. Good. Others. We have nothing further. We're at the end of our agenda. May I make a motion that we adjourn early now? Okay, motion made to adjourn, seconded by Rebecca. And uh, I've, I've been told I have to be more formal on all my motions, so I'll do that. Uh, they didn't like my smile, so. Uh, in favor of adjourning, raise your hand. All opposed, stay here. See everybody on February the 11th at 1 p.m. afternoon meeting. Thank you, everybody. And uh, Edward, welcome again. Have a great weekend, everyone, and a great rest of your day. Thank you, Thank Brittany. You. you too. Take care, everyone. Good luck care, with your bye. internet, Steve. <laughs> See you, everyone. Nice to see you, everybody. Same here.